Um, so my name is Rob Major. I'm a marine scientist um, at the Cawthorne Institute here in Nelson. Um, and over the past two and a half years, I've been working really closely with Envirostrat um, to help do the Sustainable Seas project where we're looking to, to build a, um, a seaweed sector in New Zealand. Um, and one of the first steps we saw for that was we need to develop a framework so everyone sort of can start moving forward um, together on that project um, together. Um, Sarah Ann Adams from Cawthron was, was looking after the project for a long time and she was the face of it for a while um, and now that she's moved on to, to a different opportunity I'm now taking over for the last little bit just to, to get it over the hurdle here. So pleasure to be here today and um, thank you all for coming. Um, so our challenge from Sustainable Seas was to develop and test a framework for a sustainable and high value New Zealand seaweed sector that is focused on identifying a future for the sector based on these ecosystem based management principles. So. What's really um, unique about this, this challenge from um, Sustainable Seas is that seaweed has a very natural alignment with, um, with these, these um, principles around ecosystem-based management. It's restorative, it looks after the environment as well as having these um, economic benefits that we can get. Um, so, so there's a natural alignment there which makes it a very good opportunity for us to, to tie in to these principles. Um, if you've been at the aquaculture conference for the last few days, um, there's been a lot of conversations around trust. Um, and seaweed naturally has this trust from the community. People are very really, um, engaged with it and they would like to, um, to see, it, see it go forward. So it's a really great opportunity for us there. Um, so as part of that, over the past um, two and a half years, most of you in this room have probably had a phone call from either Sarah Ann or myself or an email. We've asked you to be part of a, um, to contribute to this. Um, we've taken a very collaborative approach to, um, to trying to build this framework. Um, so the first step we did in that was on the left here, we wrote these three big stock take reports um, alongside of Envirostrat where we um, did a stock take on the seaweed sector in New Zealand, um, on the um, species attributes um, of some of our seaweed species here, um, and some, some Treaty of Waitangi principles and how that can align with those species. And also we did a, a, a Dinah Clark led a um, a review of the environmental effects of seaweeds and the ecosystem services and how that can work together. So after we wrote those, um, those reports, we then sent them out to the, the seaweed community and we did a series of focus groups and workshops. Uh, we went around Māori partnerships and growers, we had one with our manufacturers, our environmental um, research community, product research, and then also one with government people around regulation. So based off of those conversations and the response to the review documents we wrote, we then produced a draft framework. Um, and that was how, based around how we can make some decisions. Um, it was based on these multiple values of the different groups that came together with some guidelines that we identified some knowledge gaps. And from that process, the framework, we then gave that to um, a series of businesses that are operating here in the sector at the moment in New Zealand or aspiring to. Um, as case studies and they had a look at our framework and they talked to us about where they thought how it was, could help their business, where it was missing um, and so based on that we then refined the framework and then we, we've got our new outputs which is being released today which is fantastic, it'll be on the Sustainable Seas website, you can all read it and use it. So this is what it looks like, we've got our, um, our primary framework document, this is not as lengthy as the reviews, it's still 20 odd pages running over a whole range of sort of issues and, uh, and things that we see. Um, we have a series of lift outs around knowledge priorities, sector leadership priorities and regulatory priorities. And those are more in detailed, focused on how, what the issues are in those, um, for those sectors, those parts of, this, of the sector and some, some responses, some urgent responses to them there. And then we have our five case studies here. We've got CH4 Global, Kelp Blue, Pacific Harvest, um, and to f uh, Premium Seas and to Fana Upper Nui. Um, and these are all very helpful because they're all operating at different levels in the sector. sector. Some are startups, some are established. Um, to Fana Upper Nui are aspiring and they're planning their seaweed journey. So based on that, we got you, the, the case studies are very helpful because you can see how the framework applies to these, these businesses, these different levels. Um, so that's all available on the website um, now, which would be really good. Um, so from the, just to give you a brief over, overview of the framework, we sort of, this is the, sort of the guiding principles for it. We have a vision for the sector, and that is that seaweed contributes significantly to New Zealand's economy, supports thriving ecosystems, communities, and culture. And to and achieve this vision, we have our building blocks. So we have, so through the main value chain here, we have a hatcheries, which goes to farm and harvest, process and manufacture, factor, wholesale and retail, and then out to our markets. 
but surrounding that value chain, we have all the supporting priorities, environment, research, regulation, leadership, uh, to treaty, iwi, hapu, whanau, and then we have our workforce and communities which engage with that, the brand IP, the business smarts and investment that will help sell these products to the world. And as part of that, um, that vision, we see New Zealand's um, competitive advantage lies in technology-led value extraction from our unique seaweed species um, via brands with high social license uh, and envir environmental license. So we're coming back to trust again. And as, uh, from there, this framework then goes into the current state of the New Zealand seaweed sector, some barriers to growth, priority markets, supply chain, supporting priorities, business models and investment, and development risks. Um, and you might notice that th these things all aligned very nicely with our agenda today. Um, so you'll get further information on that from the rest of the speakers. Um, and it, again, it's, it's all in that framework too. Um, and just to give you a taste of what's in each of those lift outs. So this is an example of our knowledge priorities lift out here. Um, so for each of them, we've set a aspirational success goal. So here we've got seaweed research provides um, and enables practical knowledge in Maltaranga for local species and pathways to high value products and services. We can see our components that are going to lead to that success. The main uh, research barriers about why we're sort of choosing to do these things and then some urgent required um, research responses. And each of these is also a section about main audiences, some longer term goals and um, the current state of that, of that sector. Um, so next steps, um, the framework is officially released today. Hopefully you'll read it, use it, make it part of your, um, your funding applications to, to MPI, your research work. Um, one of the first recommendations we made out of the sector, um, out of the framework, sorry, when it was still in its very draft form, was the establishment of a sector voice. Um, and ANZA have been so well organized, they've managed to come together, and they're now having an AGM um, the same day we're actually officially releasing the, uh, the framework. So that's a massive achievement from everybody that's been involved with ANSA, so congratulations to them. Um, and another recommendation, we've also got a lot of uh, regulatory re recommendations for the government. It's a, um, what we've heard loud and clear from the, from the audience, uh, from the sector, is there are some, some, this regulation environment isn't fit for purpose. So we've got those, uh, so we've got those together in a nice package, and Rebecca uh, will be speaking more to that uh, today. So there's now we've got a mechanism to take those through to government. Um, and also from, from my personal perspective, I think that if ANZA set a, um, took, uh, I feel like we're now passing on ownership almost of the framework to ANZA and to the sector. And if there was a process of review and updating of the framework um, at certain time steps along our response cur um, sort of time frames, I think that'd be really helpful to, to see how it's had good impact and then how you can have better impact in the future. Um, so lastly, acknowledgements to everybody. We've got a, um, a very engaged project advisory group. Uh, Chris Kamara Inslee, Dave Taylor, Andy Elliott, and Paul Creswell have all been really helpful in guiding, guiding the development of the sector. Um, and of course, everybody that engaged with us and was part of those, um, those workshops. So thank you very much for, for coming along and being so open with, with the, the project. And I think that's why the framework um, has, is sort of doing so well and the fact that we've, we've got such a good uh, turnout for these sorts of events because everybody in the sector has been really open and they want to work together. So if we can continue that, that sort of spirit of, of um, collaboration, um, I think this would be a very good first step for success. Um, lastly, thanks to Sustainable Seas. Um, Nick Lewis um, and Rob Wilkinson on the Challenge Leadership Group have been very, very fantastic, lots of good feedback and been very supportive of the project. So thank you very much.